Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for moving with me. Much like the font standards that keep moving, I've been moved around as well. And um, we're going to talk about typography in Drupal and what modules are out there. So, there's a page on me, but we'll skip that. And um, as I'd mentioned in the other room, this is a boff. And I will be giving demos, but whenever you feel like chipping in with, you know, if you want me to try and demo something, I will try and do that during this as well. And um, I will primarily be dealing with modules that you can use since, A, they make it easy to switch between fonts on your site or use different services. And, um, you know, you, it gives you some additional front-end features that you otherwise wouldn't think about making for yourself. But if you feel comfortable enough at the theme layer to be able to use font faces or whatever in, you know, using CSS or even in uh, PHP, then you can probably go ahead and skip any of the modules that are mentioned here. It's, it's really not for you then. Because they do add some overhead and in some cases they may require you to do some extra work anyways. So I'm going to talk about flash-based text replacement, which really only has one option, Zipper. Um, a few of the options in image-based text replacement. Uh, briefly mention the one thing that's there for JavaScript embedded fonts, and primarily talk about using the uh, font face, uh, such as the dynamic font rendering and the font directory and whatnot. And I might mention where to mention, uh, get a few nice fonts, though Aaron did a great job talking about some of them already and anything else that pops up at the end of it. So, flash-based text re replacement. There's Cipher. Uh, it's been out for a really long time. Uh, it's fairly accessible. I wouldn't really consider it lightweight, and you really need to consider people with flash blockers. As you can see, it's already taken out from there. Um, and personally, I think using flash to render text seems overkill, but you know what? Some people need to use it at times. And if we wanted to get it working, first you need a font in either open type format or a, t or a true type format, so OTF or TTF files. And you need to go to either swiftmill.org to be able to download an executable that will convert that file into something that Flash can read. Or you can go to ciffergenerator.com. So this is the site, and if you go to their wizard section, oh sorry, this only takes TTF fonts. So you add that in there, and then it will spit back a, um, a Swift file for you. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've already gone through and created a Swift version of one of my fonts. So let me just see if I can find it. Or not. You can, you can specify if you wanted to just take, um, like the alphanumeric characters, or to take along with punctuation, or to take any letterings that it can find in there. So it'll, it'll, ex it'll increase the size of the Swift file depending on which option you choose. Though from what I've seen, the Swift file is reasonably small, which is a good thing. Let's see. You know what? I don't think I have a font. So we'll do a conversion right now. So I'm going to choose my font. Uh, let's see. My presentation sandbox. I'm going to choose the Ubuntu font in TTF format. Next, it'll ask you which which version of Cipher you want to use it for. Now, the module that's there for in Drupal, it uses uh, Cipher 2. I think there's a Cipher 3 beta, but it's not really recommended for the purposes of this. So, I'll have it in Cipher 2 format. And uh, as Mike had asked, um, these are the options that it gives for what kind of uh, character set to build out for the Swift file. And in this case, I'm just going to say full character set. Mm -hmm. 
this part's not fun. <laughs> it gives a preview of what kind of uh, characters it found in there, and then once I hit next, it's ready to download. So, show me where you are. Okay, so I've done that. I have to download the actual Cipher package that's there on um, on the Cipher website. So, so if I go to mikeindustries.com or just look for Cipher, it'll be the first link that you see. And at the very bottom of the page, um, it has the official release for Cipher, and you just download that one that's there. So I believe I'd already done that, and I'm going to go into the purposes of this presentation. So I go to my modules page. Uh, let's see, where are you? So the name of the module that supports Cipher is called Dynamic Rendering, and you can go to drupal.org slash project slash render for that. So I've, I'm going to enable it. And if I go to my site configuration section, you'll see this portion that now says dynamic rendering. And it has various um, it has various tabs. Uh, there's rules, adding rules, managing fonts. And if you go to the manage fonts section, it discovers that I'd already uploaded a Swift file for for this demonstration. It was it just happened to be a different font. But it'll also let you upload other font files. So now that I've already made a new one, I will, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, it's on the desktop. So I'm going to upload the Swift file, submit it, and now that's available for choosing as part of my, my font set. And once I go to the rules area, um, it'll ask you which kind of plugin you want to use, and we want to use version 2. So then we give it a name of some sort. What kind of rule are we modifying for this page? So we'll call it for headers. And I'm trying to remember what the. So I want to be able to change the site name um, element that's in there. And I want to use that Ubuntu font that I just converted. You can also pick any colors that you want for these purposes. So, say Ace, and I hit Submit. So now a rule has been created, and if I go back here, it's done the replacement. And as you can see, it's you can kind of highlight it, but you can't really tell the state of when it's been highlighted, all of that, and um, yeah. So that's the flash version of it all working. It's I believe I believe it does support pseudo selectors, but I think so. I'm not entire I haven't played around with it. Do you want me to play around with it? <laughs> we can do it right now. <laughs> um, before we do that, I, mean, I mean, you just did not on our CMS before and I noticed that there's a there's a problem with the spacing in my nights. Mm -hmm. Do you find that, that issue using that model? You do have to end up doing some level of tweak. I I don't remember if the uh, dynamic rendering allows you to uh, Here. With uh, the dynamic render module, you can set what the letter spacing can be, along with padding or font size and 
all these various other options. So then you can do a little bit of tweaking down the line for that particular font. And you can say... Pardon? Okay. This is the end of the flash part, since this was the only option. <laughs> um, so now, now that we're done with this, we can go on to uh, image-based text replacement. Is anyone interested in the image-based text replacement options, first of all? I know Ishmael was initially in the room and he was really interested in Kufon, but... Yeah. Is, is it through CSS? Um, Kufon is through CSS. Uh, JavaScript. Kind of, or JavaScript, yes. Right. But I do it at the theme level. I don't use a module. Right. Um, right. Mm -hmm. The good thing about an image-based text replacement is there are no issues with a flash blocker. And, um, but I have found sometimes that text can't be highlighted with it. And that that bugs me yeah. in in various ways. Yeah, or you can separate each letter to be an image. But then, if you're if you're using a screen reader of some sort, then it gets really funky. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, Cipher is better from that perspective. But if you have a flash blocker, then you're Screwed. Well, should it be You're right because if you turn off the CSS and the JavaScript, then you just get the text. That's true. So for accessibility. But, but what happens is a lot of screen readers do render out the JavaScript afterwards as well, so it plays into that. So that's something to keep in mind with some of the screen readers. And I found out about a lot of this through um, Everett Zufelt, who is one of the um, who is one of the chief accessibility accessibility leads for the Drupal Seven project. So um, if you want, we can go through demos for, I made demos for Kufon, um, SignWriter, and TextImage. Are any of you interested in seeing demos for any of them? I would say Kufon is probably one of the better ones between, from the three options, but what are, what are people interested in seeing? Pardon? Well, the good thing about the image-based text replacement would be that since the fonts, like since people are seeing images of the fonts, no one can explicitly copy that font from your site. Like they'd have to know the path to be able to get all that stuff before they can do anything. And from that perspective, the image-based version is great. And same with Cipher. <laughs> but I would, when we get to the font face section, I, I'm clearly in favor of that format. The main question I have about some of these things is do they help you with, uh, I'll say, obfuscating the font so somebody can't go ahead and come along and search your site for at signs and pick up email addresses and that kind of thing? Well, there are modules like um, I think one of them was uh, Email Protect or something like that that will obfuscate uh, email addresses that are on the site. So, yes, it is oh, in okay. Drupal, but it's not. It's not necessarily at the font face uh, layer. Well, yeah, I wasn't sure where they were, so. Right. Because even in other cases, like, if people see the email addresses, they would still be links. And if it's doing a link to, you know, and has the email address in there, then people can still strip it out. So there are other ways to you know, get around that. Sometimes don't want to put a bunch of stuff out there so somebody just might be able to automatically Mm -hmm. mm, the best option would be just looking at what the email protect module does. Yeah, okay. Okay. And um, yeah. 
so let me see. I enabled Coupon on the website, on my site, and um, there are a few requirements for it. One is you have to download the module, obviously, uh, and you have to also download the Coupon uh, JS file that it uh, mentions on the page. So if I go to Coupon, let's see, hopefully it pulls up. So I need to download the coupon.yui.js file. It's directly linked on the project page and place it in the uh, module's JavaScript directory, which I have already done for this. And for any fonts that you want to generate, you, uh, you go to the coupon website, you go to their generator section, and you add in um, TTF or OTF versions of the fonts um, that for that font package that you want to create. So the regular, the bold, all of that stuff should be included with it. And in this scenario, let's say we're doing it, I'm doing it again. Uh, let's see. So we'll choose a different font this time. So I want that to be my regular, I want this to be my bold. I know they don't match up, but that's not the point. Uh, I'll be my italics, and that'll be my bold italics. And I want to call this walkway. And this was a free font. And you can say what kind of glyphs you want to include with it. And the more you select, the higher the file will be, the bigger the file will become. So not <coughs> recommended to do that unless you absolutely need it. And you can also limit which domains this uh, the coupon thing will generate for, which is a great thing about it. But in this case, it doesn't matter. I acknowledge, I do this. So it's given me a, a JavaScript file. Here we go. And we'll use that in our definitions. So now if I go back to my site building section and go to Coupon settings, um, I'd already uh, made a version of this. And then as you can see, once you put it into the directory that it asks for, you can then specify where this particular font should be used. So now again, we want for our, our site name A element and let's put it in for something else also. Let's see. In my main content area, if possible. If I go back here, let's see, has it done anything? I think you're right. Try to just add it in different areas. There we go. So basically, what you would do is instead of having um, multiple selectors in each of these boxes, you specify a different selector for each box, which is not that much fun. 
let's see. Oh, so if you're, let's say if you're hovering over a link or whatever, and you wanted to change font on that particular thing, then I guess <coughs> it would... I believe so, yes. But as you can see, it, it does the full font replacement in there, and I can't select it. So that's my only gripe about it, but otherwise it's, it's a fairly well-written module, and you can do it at the theme layer as well, as with any of these options. So... Let's move out of this and go into... We can also do sign writer or text image, and they're... 10 minutes? Okay. Um, you can also use sign writer or text image, and I think text image is, in some ways, it's slightly better because what will happen is when you go into your um, into your CCK display settings, you can explicitly choose that as one of the display options for whatever fonts you upload into the site. As you know, if I uploaded my walkway uh, TTF file, it'll pick it up and tell you, do you want to use this to display this particular font um, for that particular um, text? So that's pretty cool. Pardon? For each field. Or you can even, or you can use the theming function if you wanted to, to theme it, theme out that a particular amount of text on your field. So if you wanted to, your whole content could be themed as an image, which I don't recommend. Um, there is a JavaScript-based text replacement option as well, um, which is called Typeface. In some ways, I like it because it's it's very fast. And when you upload the file, what you get back is also fairly small. The, the only, well, the two big things are it's missing pseudo-selectors right now. And in some of the examples that they showed, and I don't know if they were good examples or bad examples, the words can get split apart in the span tags. So, it, into span tags. So then, you know, reading it as far as accessibility is concerned isn't very good. Um, but you download the JS file, you convert your file, your, your font file on their website again, and I can show a demo, but I'm limited to 10 minutes, so I'm going <laughs> to skip over it for now. Yeah. And now we're getting into font face. Uh, Aaron did a fantastic presentation this morning. It is becoming the standard. My gripe would be that you need many different font formats. So, like, you know, if you want older versions of IE, they need an e embedded open type file. Safari and Firefox and all of them support open type, but older versions of the iPhone and iPad support SVG. But thankfully, uh, the web open font formats come along, and hopefully, more and more uh, browsers start supporting it. And um, the one issue, and I briefly mentioned this in the other uh, presentation, is that different browsers load the font in different ways. And so some will show the plain version or the default font for a text until that font, until the uh, the better looking font has downloaded. And whereas other ones will just hide the text until that font's downloaded and then show the page. And if the download fails, then no one sees anything. So there are four different modules for this. One is the dynamic font rendering module, which um, which I'm not going to demo for now. No. Which browser? IE. And I think Safari Firefox, too. No. Firefox will show the text. Yeah. So, depends on how far big your font is. If it's a fairly small one, you might be able to get away with it. Um, so, there's a dynamic font rendering module, which um, you place in the fonts directory. It all gets detected automatically. And um, my main issue is that when someone wants to use the font on the site, uh, for any time they're entering new uh, fields, 
they have to type in um, the filter, so default ID, put their text in, and then close it. And I think that's kind of unfair for people to remember to put into the site. Uh, but you can also do some level of the stuff at the theme layer. Um, the one I really liked was Google Font Directory. And I will demo that just because it's really fast. Uh, where is it? Here. Oh, wrong one. So I enable the Google Fonts module along with the UI for it. And if I go into my site configuration section, it takes a bit of time because it's uh, looking up what uh, fonts are available from the Google Font directory. But it'll list them all out for you. You can you simply select which ones you want to use. So I'm going to use Arimo and Arvo. Pardon? It won't download the file. It won't download the actual font onto your into your file structure or anything. It'll simply reference it from the uh, Google but font. Right. Yes. So once you go to the Google fonts, once you go to the add rules page, you can say which one should show the Arimo bold. So I'm going to do it for pound site name A. And here I'm going to do it for, or hopefully do it for all my content. So I hit save. I go back here. And if I flush the cache, there we go. It's starting to use the uh, the new fonts, and it's all set up and ready to go really fast. But and it only has three fonts, right? There's nothing like it doesn't have. Original. Pardon? It doesn't have like, like a new. Whatever. Right, but then at the same time, the Google Font directory is growing. I mean, it started off with ten different uh, font styles, and now it's twenty, twenty. 20 or 30? I don't remember the number. It's, it's, it's worth looking at. And I mean the fonts are really nice. Right. right. Unfortunately you can't with, uh, with the Google font directory because it's serving a very specific purpose of only fonts from, from the Google font directory. Um, for other types of fonts from other providers, there's the Font Your Face module. And it works in a very similar way to how uh, the Google Web Font uh, module does, except it works with Typekit, Kernest, Font Squirrel, and Google Fonts. And I believe more and more, um, as more and more APIs from other uh, font sites open up, support for them is being added in as well. So. It's definitely something worthwhile to look at. Would you like me to go through a demo for Font Your Face? Yeah, you five okay. You got a short five minutes. So I'm going to enable the Font Your Face module. And um, I'll open it up to I'll open it up to the Google Fonts API as well because what it'll do is it has to check through the listing for each of the different sites and something like Font Squirrel has around 400 different fonts that it'll list off on your page and download the font or you know you'll be downloading all those fonts whatever it lists off on the page so I don't want to do that. It also gives you an option for common fonts, which is great. None of the other ones do. <laughs> and when you go to the uh, font your face setting, or sorry, you go to the theme section, uh, go to the uh, font your face portion, you can, uh, you can, you run import to add fonts. Ah, thanks. So it found 152 odd fonts. 
I was wrong. It's not well, 10. That's all the variations. Right. It's like bold and that's how it's Yes. Like but even so, the numbers, nothing uh, to scoff at. It's more than 10. <laughs> Alright. So, once you go back to your theme section, it'll ask you for fonts to enable, and it'll list them off. Just keep in mind that the newest version of the Font Your Face module does require views to, uh, to show the listing. So I can select, let's say, Arvo and name A. And it even tells you if you want to use it in your own CSS, you just put font family Arvo for whatever text you have. So it'll automatically go in for those as well. So we want to enable it. It's already done. Go back to the front and flush our caches, and it didn't show up. That was the one issue that I found with the Font Your Face module, is that it loads the CSS rules before whatever your theme would. So if you want to override them, you have to specify them at either at the theme layer or try to find some other way to override them. So that was a bit of an issue for me, uh, unfortunately. So, basically, whatever fonts are being loaded along with any of the rules, they'll come before the rule sets for that come from the theme. So, what that means is if, if you're specifying a certain selector in, your, in the font your face module, and that same selector is there in your theme file, your theme file will override whatever is uh, above it. You could modify the font your space module to load everything afterwards, but I don't think anyone, I don't know if anyone's uh, patched it up or anything like that. The Drupal 7 version makes it a lot easier because you can just package it up with the theme and be the last thing to load. Which will be, which is really simple. Uh, so if I'm building a site and I don't want the end user to change any fonts or anything like that, is there any reason to use these modules or should I just build it in the JavaScript? Well, the thing is that all of these modules will have permissions as well, so you can block off. Um, non-administrators from being able to do any of these kind of changes on your site. But if you're proficient enough in, uh, in CSS or in PHP or whatever, like, you know, in CSS and JavaScript, then you might be better off just making it a part of your theme and just packaging up, either packaging up the fonts within your themes directory or, you know, explicitly uh, sourcing them to a particular um, uh, source. And that way, the end user cannot change it at all. It would have to be done at the theme layer for someone. And um, that was Font Your Face. And the one that I had written up was called the uh, Google What Font Loader. And what this, this requires the most amount of work from all of the others because it does not list any of the fonts or anything like that. What you do is you create font packages. So it consists of... Uh, what a module info file would look like, and you specify different settings in there. Um, but it works uh, natively with Typekit, Google Fonts, uh, Font, Font Live, Font Deck, and um, you can also specify custom fonts. So if you have your own fonts, uh, you could specify those in your font face and have it get linked to in here, and it will work with all of that. So if I went to my uh, to one of the font info files. In this case, I'm using a Google, a Google font, their Ubuntu font, and this is what the font info file consists of: the name of whatever gets picked up, the uh, the font family that I want from Google, and my rendering CSS file. So inside here, as you can see, it has a whole bunch of different. Uh, it has loading and active 
listed as a part of it. And what the web font loader does is when a page loads, um, it'll set states for your font, whether it has been downloaded or not. And um, so there are three states. One is WF inactive, WF loading, and WF active. And these are also specified with specific fonts. So, so this allows you to get consistent behavior across different browsers in terms of downloading a font. So uh, if you prefer for all, for, for all browsers to first show the default text and then um, move over to the nicer looking font, uh, this does that. Or if you want, in this case, I want to have all my text be hidden until the font is um, downloaded. So my visibility is hidden. And then once it's active, I set my uh, visibility for the font to show up. And in this case, let's see. What font? Loader API. <coughs> so I'm going to turn that one off. I go to the site building section, and you see Google Web Font Loader settings. And for any info files that it can pick up, it'll start listing them out. So in this case, I have the default Google font for Josephine, and a packaged font called Batekna. So I'm going to select Batekna, and it gives you the option to uh, cache that uh, JavaScript file from Google locally as well, so then it doesn't have to query Google on different page loads, or if the Google Ajax APIs go down, then this will keep working. So I save the configuration, and as you can see, it's up and running. Can you have a sample of uh, custom font? Um, yes, but Tecna is a custom font, and let me just sh quickly show that. Yeah, I know you got one more slide, too, if you can just do it in a real quick recap and not show a demo on the slide. So okay. Lunch. Sure. So, a custom font info file looks like that. So, I have custom families, and I list out what uh, fonts I'm including as a part of this. If you wanted to, you could even, if you're referencing just one single family and then listing them all off afterwards, you could just say custom families equals the techna. And then I have all my uh, TTF files, all of that stuff in here with it. And um, yeah, my style sheet just references what, where to find all the stuff and everything. And the font info file references it relative to where or, or it references the uh, CSS files relative to where that font info file is. So if you wanted, you could have a fonts directory, a font direct, I mean, a font directory. Yeah, and then you can list out stuff inside that, in that way. But as I mentioned, it's a more complex system, and you have to do more setup for all of this. Um, our use case, or my use case for this was um, the website I work on has it's based off a domain access thing, and we wanted to have different fonts showing up on different sites. So we just made these font packages, and then the different site editors can choose which one they want to use for their site. So it made it really simple for us that way. But if you only need to use one, then you're better off just packaging it up um, at the theme layer. And you can use the Google Web Font Loader API and just download that and make it a part of your thing. Uh, this was one of our fonts, just to give an idea. And it's all selectable. Or, yeah. yeah, it's all selectable. And I can change colors, so that's great. And these are some places on where to get nice fonts. Aaron gave uh, a lot of them, and I thank him a lot for that. And um, if we have some time later on, we can add some more, or I'll update it. And I'll post the slides online as well. And thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Shok if he'll sidebar any questions or answers that uh, you guys have. Can you stay for like five minutes? Sure. Okay, so don't take all of his time because I'm sure he wants to eat lunch too. Uh, so uh, that was our morning. Our schedule for the afternoon is posted on the wall, so make sure to check. Uh, we have, is it an hour for lunch? or for, when, does, when does the next time start? Will someone look over there on the wall and tell me?
Uh, so, guys, just so you know, the Spring Arts Tower is supporting our uh, camp today.